I am Lise Colucci. I am one of the life coaches at Queen Being. Today I am answering some survivors Q&As that I asked earlier and was given a couple questions that I think will lead to some interesting discussion and topics and hopefully get some answers for people to start working on their healing. What does CPTSD feel like? Let's look at what some of the symptoms of CPTSD. Overwhelm, emotional, uh, difficulty with regulating your emotions. So diff difficulty in having things happen in life and not feeling completely overwhelmed by them and not having emo having emotional reactions that are out of the proportion to the situation at hand. Does that make sense? Like it's just overwhelming dysregulation of your emotions. Emotional flashbacks, that's another one. Um, avoidance of social situations, avoidance of the issues at hand, avoidance of your own um, emotions that's another symptom. Also, on the flip side of that, it can be looking for someone to rescue you from the situation. So it can feel like uh, avoiding your own feelings and looking to other people to help you um, sort of uh, tell you what to feel, in a sense. A loss of trust in self. This is a big one. <laughs> a loss of trust in yourself, tr a loss of trust in your intuition, in your focus, in your own life, which can lead to a feeling of extreme loneliness. So it can feel like you don't know who you are and you can't trust yourself and you don't know where to go from there. It feels stuck. You can feel really stuck. Uh, sleep issues, a lot of sleep issues people have, insomnia, night nightmares, um, all kinds of sleep issues. Detachment and dissociation, that's a big one. On the flip side of the emotional dysregulation can be dissociation from this, anything that triggers you. So if you have a trigger, instead of getting emotionally um, dysregulated and overwhelmed, you might get overwhelmed and slip into sort of a detached, numb, dissociative feeling. And that's pretty common with CPTSD. Preoccupation with the abuse of the abuser. It can feel like a need to... C continually ruminate on the abuse or the abuser to hyper focus on them. Toxic shame, which feels like you actually deserved the abuse. That's another one. Body tensions. There's a lot of tension in your body. Your body's holding a lot of this, the trauma. And so another question, how do you handle unavoidable everyday stress? Um, stress that's not related to narc abuse. There's a lot more to the questions, but I'm summing them up to make it simpler. So when you have CPTSD, when you have abuse, when you have trauma, that overwhelm feeling can make it so that everyday stress feels un it's unsurmountable, right? It can make things, like I said, with the dysregulation, it can make the tiniest stress feel like a giant, you know, mountain out of a molehill feeling. And so some ways to manage it would be daily meditation, daily meditation, uh, mindfulness meditations, 10 minutes a day. Most of us can carve that out <laughs> and it can help a lot. It can do more than help a lot. It actually can start to change your brain. It can start to change your, your nervous system. It can change a lot. EMDR, that's another one. Thank you. That's a perfect example of how to get some help if you, can, if you have a therapist that can do that. Cultivating gratitude. I know that doesn't seem like it would help manage daily stress, but it actually does because it's your mindset that you entered the day with that you can come back to that when you're having overwhelming stress, it can be really helpful to have anchors to anchor back to, to help you kind of come back into a better mindset. In other words, you reset through the day. You don't expect yourself to walk into the day and go all the way full steam ahead to the end of the day and not have stress rear its head and and have yourself react to it. it can help to have ways to things to anchor back to and things to help reset through the day so um, breaking down tasks into smaller chunks if you have a you know giant to-do list just take a piece of it make to did lists <laughs> so that you see what you have accomplished because a lot of times when we get overwhelmed with daily stress it's we are um getting kind of perfectionist with ourselves, and we're sort of feeling defeated because we're not getting everything accomplished on our to-do list. We'll make lists of things you did do and include things that you do for yourself. Bullet journals. <laughs> Bullet journals help a lot. Look them up. Um, create self-care ideas for yourself or after a trigger. So if it's daily stress and it's triggering you into feeling like you are having trauma stress, 
create things in your day to help with self-care, things that nurture you, things for your senses, take a walk. Um, you know yourself and you need, to, this is a area to, I mean, I have done videos on it and I could do a million more on self-care and we can come back to that, but that's that answer. Um, take timeouts, don't go all the way through the day expecting to, like I said, expecting to start at the beginning and just go until the end. Take timeouts intentionally before you're stressed out. All right, understand what stresses you and limit your time with it if you can. Arrange your day so that the stressful things happen, like if you can, um, at times of day when you can handle it so that you're not like, basically if you're operating on fumes, you're not gonna get very far. So, and then take time for yourself after. You gotta take care of yourself. Okay, on to the next question, okay, numbness. We talked about that in the list of CPTSD symptoms. I'm not saying you have it just because you have numbness. I'm just saying it's part of it all goes together. Whether or not you would be diagnosed with that is up to a um, someone who can diagnose you, <laughs> and that's not me. But it is part of narc abuse. It is part of a coping skill that we have for a lot of people to kind of emotionally go numb. We dissociate from our the feelings of the trauma so that we're able to cope. And when you do it long enough, or if you're really, really skilled at it, you know, um, you can get stuck there. It also is, it's sort of a safe place to kind of hide out, if that makes sense, from, and, and then you can't kind of force yourself back into it. You have to wait it out and work with it, I think, I think. One thing is notice what you do feel. Pay attention in your day to what you do feel. Just take like, random times and just pay attention. Oh, I feel bored. I feel irritated. I feel it doesn't matter what it is. Just name it. Name the feelings that you have at random times. Um, don't force it. Just allow the feelings to come. Allow what you're feeling to be there. If right now you're feeling numb, it could be just that the emotions aren't up right now. You know, it could be that you're not in the space to feel them. Be it situations where you're safe to feel talking to safe people like coaches, therapists, friends that are safe, that, that understand what you've been through, talking about it and creating situations so that you have safe support, right? And try not to run from the feelings when you actually start to feel them. Notice the way in which you dissociate from it. Um, you can notice like, mm, you start talking yourself out of something or you start, and, and not for just the anger, the sadness, and the stuff related to the narc, but kind of, we start to get numb, like you said, for all things, even happiness. Look for things that do bring you joy and don't expect them to feel as great as they normally do, but allow any little bit of feeling that you have just to be there and know that you deserve the happiness too. Self-care, again, is huge. If you can create self-care around your senses and get into your body a bit, Sometimes that can help awaken feeling a little bit more. Know that you're okay, that if the abuse is over, it's done. And anything that does come up is a part of the process that you're going to feel it, you're going to move through it, and you're going to heal from it. And like I said, talking to a therapist or a coach at that point, you know, might benefit for someone that's really stuck in the numbness. Allow love in when you have friends or animals or children allow people to give to you, just allow it to be there, that um, you don't have to have the big giant feelings that you normally would have back. You know that in your heart, you love these people and animals and things, but allow others to give to you too. And allow others to feel around you, talk to people about their feelings and allow them to just, just be with them while they have them. Sometimes that can help, help you feel safer in your own feelings. And Learning to trust again, not just significant others, but people and friends, not feeling like everyone has been lying to you all along or that they're going to lie. Um, and also another symptom of CPTSD is the lack of self-trust. So, and you're not trusting. Um, and also, actually, there's a second question that I'm going to put together with this one because I think they relate entirely to one another. And it's how do you gain back using your intuition? when it's been taken away from narc abuse relationships. Um, you learn to trust yourself. You learn to trust your intuition. You learn to trust your body responses to um, uh, other people, to situations so that you are 
aware what, what you're feeling when you're feeling it. And when something is not feeling right, to trust your gut, so to speak. Ways to build trust is learn. I believe it's learning to trust yourself more because if you can trust your judgment and your intuitions, then it's a lot easier to discern whether or not to trust other people. Um, and frankly, I don't think we need to entirely trust other people right away. I think self-trust comes first. If you look back in the videos, I did one on um, emotionally safe people. Uh, go watch that and I'll try to link it. That one kind of helps you with knowing when someone is emotionally safe and when they're not. So, so with trusting yourself, keep promises to yourself. Be accountable to yourself. Uh, stay away from toxic people, obviously. <laughs> Don't give info to people who are um, always negative. If you have someone in your life who's, you know, always going to say something who's going to knock you down, don't give them info. And that's a way not to, to learn to trust other people too. learn who you're talking to and give them only the info that relates to them. If that makes sense. Speak kindly to yourself, set reasonable goals for yourself, recognize your strengths and build on them. Be decisive. So create, maybe decide that you're going to decide on you know, three things that day and actually make decisions. Things like this, they help you take your power back so that you, when you're in yourself more, if that makes sense, like when you're like not in question of who you are and you're able to trust yourself, then you're able to discern other people better. I appreciate you all and I wish you well. Bye-bye.